Number 15. Simon says, You know how, on Halloween, your senses are heightened, you start hearing things, seeing things that don't really exist, paranoia sets in, and you don't know whether or not you can trust your own senses. Well, Amanda knows all, knows the feeling, as she began questioning her own senses during one Halloween long ago. When she was seven, her babysitter took her trick-or-treating. Amanda was a witch this Halloween. They'd finished all the houses in her neighborhood and headed over to the next. This is when, out of the corner of her eye, Amanda saw someone dressed in a big black hooded cloak. Whenever Amanda would turn around, he'd be there, lurking in the distance, looking towards them, watching them. Although Amanda was creeped out by the stalker, she assumed the cloaked being was just your average parent, corralling a group of trick-or-treaters, but she would soon be proven wrong. Once they'd hit up the final house in the area, they returned home through a small park that led back to Amanda's neighborhood. It was dark as the devil's soul, silent, there was no one. Amanda's babysitter suggested that they play Simon Says. Apparently, she started getting nervous about the hooded being as well, who was still following them. Simon Says walk faster. The babysitter urged Amanda, and soon, Simon Says start running. Amanda and her babysitter ran until Amanda's hat flew off. She came to a halt to pick up her hat and behind them, she saw the hooded man chasing them. To this day, I still get chills when I picture him, Amanda writes. First, I have never seen anyone run that fast. It was like his feet weren't even touching the ground, but worse, under the hood he had no face, just a black shadow or hole where his face should have been. Amanda's babysitter took action, picking her up and racing out of the park. She called the police, but they never caught the culprit if they could even catch a demon. Although Amanda assumes it was likely just a masked man trying to scare people, she'll always remember Remember the void under his hood, no face, just darkness. Number 14. Horrific Hayride Halloween hayrides are at the height of fun. Usually, there are some antics along the way that are supposed to scare you. Everyone knows they're just tricks, however, so it's all fun and games. That is, until it isn't. One group of around 40 hayriders viewed a haunting sight that was very real and very devastating. Brian Jewell often performed a stunt along the hayride route wherein he'd pretend to be hanging from the gallows Though he'd appear to be suspended, his feet would be on solid ground. But this night, the stunt went haywire. When the hayriders arrived to find Jewel had accidentally hanged himself for real. He's supposed to have the noose around his neck, but it's not a noose that tightens, said the prosecutor. James Holzap fell. Jewel would step down about one foot to the ground, making it appear he had been hanged. Usually, Jewel gave a speech while the wagon drove by. When he was silent, the tractor driver grew worried, and he had reason to worry. Hosap Fell said that the stunt had always worked, and the gallows was checked to see if there had been any foul play. None was ever found. Number 13. The Hallucination Redditor Killer Orange Cat tells a Halloween night story that will keep you up at night. One Halloween, when he was 16 years old, he was home alone in his parents' house. He felt a migraine coming on, so decided to put a bowl of candy with a note saying no one was home and to take one. He'd check in with security cameras just in case there were any problems. And so every time he woke up, he checked in. Everything seemed fine, that is, until one time, he woke up and tried to turn and check the clock. He couldn't move due to sleep paralysis. During this paralysis, he'd often hallucinate as well, both auditory and visual hallucinations. The OP tried to go back to sleep, but he heard a creaking sound. His bedroom door was being opened. He peeked through the darkness, and what he saw sent his pulse racing. One of Jabba the Hutt's green goblin-like guards was peering through the crack in the doorway. The OP stared at him, and he looked back. Then he opened the door and came inside. The OP closed his eyes, wishing his hallucination away, but he heard the creature creeping around the room. 
Once the door closed again and there was no more creeping, he fell back asleep. It was only later, when he woke up and could move, that he saw that the house had been robbed. It wasn't a hallucination at all. Someone had actually stood over him in a goblin costume while he pretended to sleep. Number 12. Parents First Date Halloween was roaring in like a ghost train when a redditor by the username R.W. Bingham and his friends decided to tell ghost stories. One of these ghost stories would haunt the group for the rest of their lives. Although it doesn't sound like haunted material, one of his friends told a true story about her parents' first date that would win any scary story contest. The date went well, if a little awkward. As they were saying goodnight, his friend's dad said that they should head out on a midnight hike at Provo Canyon. Probably not a good idea. In fact, definitely not. The guy knew the area because he was a rock climber, so his friend's mother agreed. They drove to the mouth of the canyon and headed out on their midnight hike. A new moon and thousands of stars shined overhead, very romantic, some might say, that is, until a bad feeling started to set in. The path in front of them was about to pass below overhanging trees. It would put them in complete darkness. The guy's gut kept telling him to turn back, but he marched on. The woman also felt the same feeling of dread as they passed on. The feeling of dread was explained by something soft bumping against the man's foot. The soft object was laid out in the path, but they couldn't see what it was. It was too dark. They didn't want to know what it was either. Instead, they bolted from the forest and didn't look back. R.W. Bingham writes, Years later, after being married for some time, they were watching an interview with Ted Bundy in response to a question asking him to describe the time that he felt the closest to being caught. He explained about the night that he lured a girl into Provo Canyon and had just taken her life. When he heard some people coming up the trail, Bundy said he'd hidden in the trees just before they arrived and he watched as a random guy walked straight straight into the girl. This would definitely rank number one on a list of the top 15 creepiest first dates ever. Number 11. The Q Riots Riots are spontaneous, unpredictable, and they can grow out of hand in the blink of an eye. So imagine how wild a riot might get on one of the most unpredictable nights of the year, Halloween night. That's what happened in 1945 in Q Beach, Toronto. Area high schoolers decided to riot there, lighting bonfires along a main road and filling them with fences and gasoline. When the police showed up, the kids didn't back down. Instead, they started chucking rocks at the police. They even blocked fire trucks from the road. It seems they wanted their bonfires to light up the night. Police managed to get a hold of 13 rioters, but when they arrested them and locked them up at the central booking station, 7,000 rioters came to their defense. Only water cannons and tear gas could disperse them, and many ended up with a record that night. No one knows why these young men and women became so aggressive on Halloween. Perhaps something evil possessed them. Number 10. The Moaning Man, Redditor John Locke 4815 tells a tale of a particularly scary Halloween. When he was in the sixth grade, he and his friends, Brandon and Nick, went trick-or-treating as zombies. Although they had a good night, a single horrifying memory haunts him to this day. At around 10 o'clock, the Halloween parties were hitting off and kids were heading home to pass out from all the candy. John and his friends were caught out amongst the hullabaloo of children racing home and older kids and adults winding their way to the happening parties. They ducked onto a darker, road less traveled to be away from the crowd. Most of the houses were dark, a rare light still shone, but mostly the street lamps lit the way. No people, just the boys. That's when they saw him. A young man with a mask on stood on the curb of an intersection, holding a pillowcase. The boys raced away. When the young man began to moan, he watched them all the way down the sidewalk, but the boys made it to Nick's aunt's house unscathed. 
or so they thought, they were sitting inside when John spied something out of the front room window, in his own words, in the dark, I could make out a white mask, like the guy at the bus stop, he was just standing in somebody's yard, looking to the window, John told his buddies, but they didn't believe him, when they headed out, the guy wasn't there anymore, but sure enough, when they arrived at another intersection, there stood the young man, watching them, moaning, Again, they kept on walking. At another intersection, they stopped to rest and eat some candy. As John was stargazing, there was a rustling in some nearby bushes. The boys sprang to their feet as the moaning man sprung from the bushes, brandishing a screwdriver. Needless to say, they raced out of there and never looked back. Number 9. The Unseen Patient Redditor Zerbo has a haunted healthcare story that will chill you to the bone. The ambulance company that I used to work for had a haunted ambulance. Rig 12. A lot of EMTs had stories about it, but I never put much stock into paranormal stuff, that is, until I had my own experience, he wrote. As Zerbo tells it, he and his partner were pulling the late night shift in a rural community. At 3 a.m., it was dark and silent out, and they were both sleeping in the cab of the ambulance. Mumbling woke Zerbo up. He thought his partner was trying to wake him. I'm trying to sleep, he said, closing his eyes. But then a male voice said, Oh my god, am I dying? Heavy breathing followed, and it distinctly sounded like this was coming from the patient compartment. Both Zerbo and his partner jumped up and turned to look. A few seconds of silence, and then a click and a hiss of an oxygen bottle regulator. It sounded as though it was leaking. Zerbo turned the lights on, and they raced from the ambulance, thinking perhaps a homeless person had entered through the rear doors while they were sleeping. But when they opened the rear doors, nothing. No one. When they checked the oxygen tanks, they were closed. Not much more sleeping happened that night. Number 8. Michael Myers Redditor OP Incognitus claims that he kept this true story under wraps until revealing it on Reddit. As one of the oldest trick-or-treaters in his neighborhood, he had spent the evening out with his friends collecting candy. At the end of the night, he split from his friends to head home. The walk home was a long one, and there were few trick-or-treaters out at that hour. The OP was walking fast down roads he didn't often go. When hooting and howling filled the air, he turned onto a hill when he spotted a group approaching. They were all wearing rubber masks, and one of them shouted, What do you have there? Get over here. The entire group zeroed in on him as he was loaded up with three bags of candy. He recognized their voices and knew they were a lot older than he was. They told him they'd break his head if he didn't stop, but he didn't listen. An adrenaline rush sent him racing down the hill. Of course, the group wasn't going to let him off that easily. They followed after, but soon most of them had given up the chase. Most, apart from three members, one of them was dressed as Michael Myers. He persisted, as the other two also fell behind. Myers began to make some ground on him, so he made a beeline towards the only house on the block, with its lights still on. He made it to the deck and turned to see Myers standing a respectable distance down the driveway. The owner of the house, a grisly old man, came to the door, only to throw candy at him and turn back inside. He was alone with Myers again. He tried to talk to him. He said he wouldn't leave until Myers did. Myers yelled that he would break his knees. After he rang the doorbell again, Myers began to retreat, but the OP wanted revenge. Spotting a baseball bat in the man's backyard, he grabbed it, hit his candy, and followed Myers up the hill. He demanded an apology. Myers said what he would give him was a broken knee. But when Myers lunged at him, he was ready for it. His bat was ready. Mike Myers fell to the ground. He groaned there. The OP batted him a few more times for good measure. Myers begged him to stop. Although a group of masked men chasing after you would probably be one of the most frightening realities you might face on Halloween, he came out on top in the end. I kept that bat under my bed for the next 10 years, OP Incognitus said, and it kept me comfortable at night knowing it was there. Number 7. The Hands Halloween wouldn't be the same without a haunted house. 
and Redditor Shannon Taggart has just the haunted house story to send you running for the hills. A couple houses down from Shannon's mother, a young girl mysteriously passed away during the night from a brain aneurysm. When the family went on holiday for a while to recover from the incident, Shannon's uncle was asked to look after their pets. Shannon's mother and father, who were dating, accompanied the uncle on one occasion. Her mother was a pianist and her father wanted to be a veterinarian, so the home, which had a grand piano and plenty of pets to care for, was a win-win. When they arrived, Shannon's father and uncle went downstairs where the animals were kept while her mother headed for the piano on the first floor. As she began to play, something brushed past her feet, a cat she thought playing on. Perhaps it crept up from the basement. She started playing again and soon felt the same sensation on her ankles. Looking around, she found nothing. Shrugging it off, she began to play the piano once more, but that's when the sensation took a terrible turn. Hands grasped her ankles in a firm grip. She broke away and raced to the head of the stairs, calling down to her boyfriend and brother. They hurried upstairs and went outside of the haunted house. What's wrong, her brother asked. Hands, they grabbed me around the ankles. Shannon's mother replied. Her brother grew pale. That was a game the daughter who passed away used to play with her dad, he said. She'd crawl under the piano while he was playing to take him by the ankles and move his feet on the pedals. Chills, anyone? Number 6. Come on in. One Halloween, Jimmy Big Beans visited his cousin. All were teenagers. They were bored, and instead of doing the bad things bored teenagers do on Halloween, they thought they'd go out and try to score some candy. The neighborhood where these cousins lived was more than a century old with ancient, decrepit houses that, according to Jimmy, looked like something out of a horror movie. After earning their candy by knocking on doors, Jimmy's cousin Double Dog dared him to knock on a rather sinister looking house. Jimmy didn't know the area or the history of the place, so he approached the house like it was nothing. While his cousins hung back, Jimmy knocked and the door slowly creeped open. The inside of the house was pitch black, only a dull light shone from a room deep inside. Jimmy recalls, I remember thinking these people had gone all out for Halloween because this place was so creepy. He shouted into the silence, but no one responded, at least not yet. As he turned to leave, a woman's voice whispered, Come on in. Stuck in place, Jimmy couldn't move if his life depended on it. Come on in. We're here, the voice repeated. Scared out of his mind, Jimmy stood frozen in place. It was only when a loud bang sounded, followed by pounding footsteps, headed towards him from deep inside the house, that he turned tail and ran. Of course, Jimmy's cousins thought it was a riot, but when he told them what had happened, their laughter quickly faded. That house has been abandoned for years, they said. Yet another haunted house on Halloween. Number 5. 666. Redditor Zoinks the Miner was living in her college dorms without a roommate when, one night around Halloween, she was typing out an essay on her computer with the door shut. She left her room to go to the bathroom right next door, locking her room behind her because there had been some thefts on her floor. A couple minutes later, she returned to her room to find the devil's number written a couple paragraphs below her own work. 666, ghost, evil spirit, malware, you decide. Number 4. Vampire Slayers In 2004, Matthew Schofield went to Romania to investigate a vampire slaying. He found that a man by the name of Toma Petre had been unburied, his heart had been torn out, and his body had been burned to ashes, after which his relatives mixed the ashes together with water and drank it. The vampire's heart was also eaten. Upon police investigation, the vampire sister asked what the problem was. Vampire slaying is illegal in Romania, but that doesn't stop people from doing it. In fact, there's a pattern of vampire slaying in this village, with a number of bodies being dug up with similar results. In fact, it's a tradition that spans generations. 
In many villages across southern Romania, most believe their family histories include vampires, as well as victims of vampires, and they were taught as children how to slay vampires. Number 3. Laughing and Moaning after 40 years, Anne still remembers the terror from Halloween night, terror full of laughter and moaning. It was 1973, and Anne was 16 years old. She had just moved into a new house that day, which her dad had built, being that it was Halloween. She went to a party that night, and ended up inviting a friend named Jay back to her place. At around 2.30 a.m., they heard a voice, the tone of which they'd never heard before. It was a moan, a moan of anguish, anguish that turned suddenly into maniacal laughter. They searched the house, but their search turned up nothing. But once they returned to the couch, they heard the moaning again. It entered their very souls, and they felt sadness wash over them. They searched the house and the grounds again, but nothing. And then again, the voice, the moan, the laughter. Anne and Jay felt their skin crawl. They felt complete and utter despair. Pure evil ensnared them that night. But what exactly that evil was, they would never know. Number 2. Sid Vicious the Chelsea Hotel is known for its haunted activities, but none more so than this story told by a guest, Brandy Neal, who visited the place on Halloween. One of the creepiest things to happen at this hotel was when, in 1978, bass player Sid Vicious allegedly took his girlfriend, Nancy Spungen's life with a knife in room 100. Sid himself passed away before police could charge him. Brandy's cousin didn't know about this history or about Sid Vicious at all, but when she showered at the hotel in their fifth floor room, she encountered Sid Vicious's spirit. While Brandy was out scrounging for some snacks, her cousin took a shower. In her own words, she felt immediately uneasy and later told me that she sensed a strong presence standing behind her while she was washing her hair. She says she heard a man whisper in her ear, get out. Then she quickly saw the man before he vanished. The shower is the last place I'd want to encounter a ghost. Talk about being vulnerable. Brandy arrived back to the room to find her cousin panicking and blocking the door closed. She tried to describe what happened and, later, when they were wandering the haunted hallways of the hotel, they crossed paths with a painting of Sid Vicious. The cousin came to a halt and claimed that was who she'd seen in the shower. Sid Vicious wanted them out of the Chelsea Hotel. The OP had read up on the hotel's history via the site Real Paranormal Experiences. The website claimed that these encounters with Sid Vicious's ghost were not uncommon. He'd been met in the elevator and in other areas of the hotel as well. Misery sometimes doesn't love company though, because regardless of others claiming similar encounters, Brandy's cousin couldn't wait to leave the hotel the next day. Before we get to number 1, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT with underscores instead of spaces. I also have a Twitter at YT underscore Chills where I post video updates. I'd really appreciate it if you followed me and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. Also, I recently created a subreddit where you can submit videos and stories for future lists. It's r slash chills narrator, and the link is in the description below. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way you'll be notified of the new videos we upload every Tuesday and Saturday. If English isn't the only language you speak and you're interested in getting a shout out, click more, then add translations. By translating the video, not only will more people be able to watch it, but a link to your channel will be added in the description. Number 1. The Headless Pianist Haunted House Fall 1978 
blogger Ann Sawin decided to explore the old, dilapidated haunted house located behind hers. With only a chain link fence to separate it from her own, the house was so fallen apart that it looked as though no one lived there. Newspaper would often sit outside, unread, until the ancient owner, an old woman, would hobble down to gather them, and a light would always be flickering through the window at night. Believe it or not, Anne was more interested in the garage than the home. It was tucked away, neatly camouflaged from view in the overgrown backyard. In it, Anne and her friends could just spy a wooden crate with chains wrapped around it. Needless to say, the locked box was a curiosity amongst the neighborhood. They believed it held the husband's body, probably a headless one, as most thought she did him in. Many claimed to hear the man's ghost crying out or seeing his headless body stumble around the backyard. It was Halloween night. When the 6th grade Anne was trick-or-treating with her friends, she stopped short at the haunted house. The house was alight and the old woman sat outside with a tray of homemade cinnamon and sugar donuts. Anne and her friends believed the donuts were poisoned, so they ran around the neighborhood, warning everybody. No one went to the old lady's house. Later that night, Anne was gazing into the forest trees when she saw a woman racing across her neighbor's yard towards the garage. Anne knew she had to warn her. She jumped the fence, where she heard giggling emanating from the garage. She went in through a broken window in the back and found a beautiful young woman. The woman apologized for waking her, saying she had been playing tag with him in the woods until he left. After dancing with Anne, she stroked the wooden crate, saying the crate held a piano. She said he was a pianist and she was a dancer. That is when she shoved a donut in Anne's mouth and then another until they were suffocating her. My hands clawed at my neck, Anne writes. I was desperate for air. When Anne tried to leave, the woman reached out and grabbed her arm tightly, demanding that she come back to visit because the woman was lonely all by her lonesome. Anne made it back home, safe and sound. The next morning, her throat was parched with cinnamon and sugar. She saw a police car at the house next door. When she went to see what was going on, the policeman opened up the crate and there was a piano inside. Inside the piano, a headless skeleton. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!